welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're so glad you're joining us again this week. You know, we're always happy for people like you, people that are interested in what's happening in our cities. It's important for good government that there be a good flow back and forth of ideas and information and questions between city councils and city staff and you, the people that live in the city. So that we're glad that you're joining us again. If you haven't seen us before, each week we'll have somebody on from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area to talk about one of the current and recent things that that city's doing and to tell you about opportunities to get involved. Now, this week, we're very happy to welcome Jim Prom from the Plymouth City Council. It's been a little while since we've had you. It has, I believe about a year or so. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so we're glad to have you back and fill us in on what's happening in Plymouth. I appreciate you inviting me in to mm -hmm. discuss things. And I'll let you introduce yourself <clears throat> out to our wider audience. Tell them a little bit about yourself and how you got on the council. All right, I'm Jim Prom. I'm on Plymouth City Council Ward 4. I uh, just re-elected for a four-year term after serving a full term and one year of another term. So mm -hmm. five years on the council uh -huh. and ready to serve her four more. Mm -hmm. How long have you lived in Plymouth? Lived in Plymouth since 1996. Oh. Grew up in Northeast, uh, moved out to California for a few years mm -hmm. and brought, uh, came back to Minnesota uh, to meet, you know, to start a family. Mm -hmm. And so you see a lot of changes in Plymouth as it's got growing to be one of the bigger cities around. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Even since I got here, I live uh, right off of uh, 47 and Pineview and uh -huh. Northwest Boulevard. When I first arrived, uh, it was all farms. Right. And I would take my motorcycle out and just get, a, get out of the city. Uh -huh. And now I've got to go a lot farther <laughs> out to 101 before I'm actually out of the city. Yeah. A lot of building. Yeah, when we moved here, uh, we look across 169 and there'd be cows and yeah. <laughs> bales of hay. <laughs> That's our heritage. Yeah, we right. are a farm community. Right, yep. we are. Mm -hmm. Well, now we talked about a bunch of issues ahead of time, but I thought we probably should start a little bit about talking about last fall's election to, in 2018. Uh, what positions were up besides yours? In addition to me, of course, the biggest right. position was the mayor. Right. Uh, mayor Kelly Slavic served wonderfully for uh -huh. 12 years and she decided not to run again. So there were three different uh, people running for right, mayor, right. including Jeff Washey, who uh -huh. won from Ward 2. Mm -hmm. So he had some experience with the city already, right? Yes, he had about seven years of experience uh -huh. before running for mayor, and he is the new mayor, which opened up his position in Ward 2. Oh, right. And we had four people running in ah. that one. So there's a lot of oh, interest this year in people in Plymouth running for office. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think people, because of all the tumult that we're experiencing, there are more people interested in government. And that's, there's nothing wrong with no, that. No, that's good. You know, that's that's so actually wonderful. a good thing. Right. Uh, Councilmember Johnson reminds me that yeah. it's a good thing when people run for office. It shows a lot of interest. Oh, right. And, you know, if you don't, if you don't win the first time, Try it again. Oh, right. Try right. it again. This. Consider it your learning curve. Oh, right. <laughs> There's we, lots to learn. We don't always succeed the first time right. we're in. Right. I ran a time or two before right. I won as well. So it's worth it. It's worth serving the people, and it's a very interesting position. Right. And then there was a, because you have how many wards? So we have four wards. Oh. We're set up in a perfect cross section, right. or, you know, cut it up right. in quarters. Uh, and we have four wards, and we have two at large. Right. And then we have the mayor, so a total of seven. And you're right, Ned Carroll was uh, running again for his second right. term at large that he also won. Mm -hmm. So all uh, of the current people carried forward? They did, and then we okay. have a new member, Nick Rail, uh -huh. who won Ward 2 in that four-way right. race. Right. Mm -hmm. How does your council decide on what goals or priorities, or what are you going to focus on during 2019? That's a very good question. At the beginning of every new term uh -huh. and a new year, we meet early in January okay. to discuss our legislative priorities. And in that uh, study session, we come up with what, uh -huh. what things are important to, to all of us. Right. And that's kind of a very interesting meeting uh -huh. because we are, have very different ideas. Right. But at the end of the day, we come together and we say, okay, what is really the most important uh -huh. for Plymouth? And this year we had a few legislative priorities uh -huh. uh, in regards to getting funding, of course. Oh, right. Isn't that what right. it's all about? Oh, getting definitely. Getting funding for the major priorities right. that we have, a lot of which are transportation uh -huh. related. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you have your own bus system, right? We do run our own bus system. It's very efficient. Uh -huh. And uh, so that's 
that's Plymouth Link. Right. And that's, uh, like I said, it's sort of a wonderful pass-through uh, dollars go into that. Right. And it's very efficient. We have a lot of compliments on our mm -hmm. transport system. But we don't have any uh, major transit uh, corridors uh, Yeah, there's Plymouth. nothing to go s across the uh, west to east. No. You can get downtown. No. And get back. Right? That's about it. Yeah. That's about it, yeah. So that's so just the way it is. That's an area that probably needs work and will do, but things, like you said, don't happen very fast necessarily. Well, one road, uh, Highway 55, is running out at a uh -huh. diagonal. So right. if there were some area where something, some transit-related project would be uh, appropriate, that would probably be the one because it runs diagonally through right. the city of Plymouth. Yeah, that's true. Out to, you know, out, to right. out that way. Mm -hmm. Now another area I thought we'd focus on, because it's true of all cities, is that there's construction and kind of development or redevelopment happening in Plymouth. Mm -hmm. And what's, we'll start with one of the projects that's getting a little play on the media. Can you tell me about the current status on the reconstruction of a bridge over 494 on Rockford Road? Yes, yes I can. So, <clears throat> The Rockford Road or County Road Nine, it's a uh -huh. county road right. goes over when it gets to there. When it goes over four ninety four, right. that's right. Uh, that bridge is too narrow, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe the number was eighty eight thousand cars I per know. day go over that mm -hmm. road. And while they were adding that lane on three ninety four, we experienced a lot of congestion oh, on that. Right. With the high density building that's going on out to the mm -hmm. west. We're just really finding a lot of problems on that. So last year, the mayor Slavic and I and a few others went down and we got some funding from the state, $10 mm -hmm. million. It's a $22 million bridge oh, wow. and it's meant to widen the road yeah. to increase flow. So people in the right lane, they'll go off onto the highway. There'll be two full lanes going across. Mm -hmm. And then for the first time, there'll be two full lanes turning left, ah. allowing allowing basically the right. most of people to get through that and trying to avoid that bottleneck. Right. So it's yeah, been I a big effort on our part to get that done. Well, and, and you were lucky to get the state to agree, right? Yeah, well, it was a bit of a, a trouble there, but uh, we got some state funds allocated. MnDOT initially was going to give us some funds and then mm -hmm. kind of pulled them back. And, you know, there's a little bit of politics oh, right, going right, on there. Right. But I do believe we'll get that funding. Mm -hmm. But the city of Plymouth also will end up donating some uh -huh. funds to that. Mm -hmm. And so the construction will take place how over what time period? It'll be a normal construction period okay. over the summer. It'll be three months where you will not be able to use uh -huh. that bridge. The whole bridge will come down uh, for about three months. And so we'll kind of have to find our way, right. ways around right. there. Uh, but that, that way is the most efficient way oh, right, to take the old right. one down and, and put the new one up. But it'll be about three to four months. So people will be kind of scrambling for a little they while. They will be. I suspect <laughs> they'll be going up to Schmidt Lake Road yeah, and crossing yeah. over and uh, or maybe down to County Road 6 uh -huh. or 55. They'll have to kind of figure out a different right. way for a little while, yes. Mm -hmm. And then be happy in the result. And then they'll be happy right. in the result, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they did a whole lot of work out there last summer, too, on the highway on 494. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. So just be a continuation. <laughs> it's just a more continuation. Right. As, like I said, we get more dense in Plymouth. That's right. The biggest thing that's happened in Plymouth is over the last five or ten years is we've really added a lot oh, more people. Yes, you have. We have as many people coming into the city during the day as we have leaving at night. Wow. And huh. we, that's a lot of people. That is. That's Moving a lot of around, people. Right. We have a lot of businesses in Plymouth. And then County Road 7, is some changes are occurring out in that area. And then can you locate where County Road 47 is for our viewers out there? As I said at the beginning of my discussion, on Northwest Boulevard in Pineview goes under 494. That's okay. County Road 47. Okay. And it's a county road, and right. it goes all the way out past 101. Right. And that's a narrow road. It's a two-lane road. And a lot of people wonder about why, why do we build all these developments and we don't do the road first? Ah. That was my question. Right, right. Well, that's because it's easy to build a development. Uh -huh. A farmer sells his, his farmstead. A developer buys it, they, they develop a plan, right. they bring it to the city, they get approval. The road's there, so, wow. you know, the road's there. So they go ahead and develop it. And we've developed right. all these developments now and added thousands of homes. And that's a lot of traffic on the two-lane oh, road. Definitely. Currently, Hennepin County 
doesn't have it slated to do any work on that for Ooh. about 10 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that's going to, yeah. a lot of people aren't too happy about that. So we're trying to work with the county okay. to develop a way, maybe even the city of Plymouth could build it uh -huh. if they'd give us the money to do it. Oh, sure. And I think that should be a four or five lane road. Oh, right. And with a trail next to it, it's, it's just necessary because out beyond 101, that's the next area to be oh, developed. Yes. Yeah. And so that'll be a pretty important road coming yeah. in and out if you're not on Rockford or Bass Lake right. Road. It's really in between the middle of the well, two. Well, and then being where it's located, it'll help take some of the load off of the other two. Absolutely. If you had if you had more lanes. Absolutely, as everyone finds a new way around, right. you find a way, the quickest way to get there, and it's good to have a lot of different roads so that traffic can make adjustments. Right, right, you know, right. when the Google says that's blocked, yeah. it's nice to be able to say, well, I know a, another right, way of getting right. there. But for those homeowners especially, uh -huh. and for the people who ride their bike and, and walk along, it, it, it is dangerous. It's a two lane road. Uh, it would really be great if we could get that developed over the next couple of years. So it's kind of at like a beginning stage where you're reaching out to get the resources? Yes, we're okay. reaching out to Hennepin County, state if we can. Uh, but it really is a priority. We started the conversation about what are our right. priorities. Right. Those two were big uh -huh. on our priority list. Two of the top three. And then, <laughs> and then Peony Lane and Schmidt Lake Road by the Wyzetta High School is undergoing a traffic study. Tell it us is. about the problems and about the study. So last year we had a couple of students get hit by a car uh -huh. as they were leaving school, right. crossing across the street. And uh, obviously there's a lot of concern. Anytime oh, somebody right. gets hit, right. we need uh, to study it. It's a very busy intersection. Mm -hmm. uh, you have Peony Lane coming down, which is only one lane each, and the Schmidt Lake Road is two. Mm -hmm. And then of course the high school is right there yeah. where the two intersect. Right. So uh, traffic studies being done to determine whether or not we need to add a, additional light ah. or something to try to mitigate that congestion and that occurrence. Right. Nobody wants to see somebody hit by no. a car. And that's kind of where that started from. Okay, and who does the study? Who's involved in that? We bring out a consultant who does okay. these studies. We pay for the studies, uh -huh. so it's objective. It's not done right. by the city itself. And then they come back with the results. They might make a few suggestions uh -huh. about possible ways that sure. you could but sometimes the study comes back and there's really not a lot you can do right. about it. So we don't know. We have to wait till we see that. But then you have some uh, data and evidence that you can use to make your decision. Yes, and this is all done by people and by engineers who have studied these right. type of things. That's their job. It's a, everything's sub-specialized, right. if you oh, will. Oh, nowadays it, it certainly it really is, is, right? There's a lot of sub-specialties. <laughs> now, development in Plymouth. What kinds of new businesses are coming into Plymouth? Well, you know, Plymouth, a lot of people don't know that Plymouth is uh, a leader in manufacturing businesses. We have, oh. I believe, the most manufacturing businesses in number of any city in the state of Minnesota. Oh, pretty cool. We have the most medical device companies oh, in the state of Minnesota. Yeah. And we have several kind of moving in and moving out. Yeah. We've dedicated our own economic development person to help facilitate ah. people coming in and out. We have a lot of different buildings, different ages, uh -huh. different heights. And so if people are interested, we finally have somebody that they can come ah. and talk to about that. Um, we have heard of uh, a couple of big companies that are right. interested in Plymouth, but we're not supposed to say anything no, about it. No, not until they m actually make the deal, right? That's right, not until they actually come in with something. And that's very smart. Be, oh, it, it right, wouldn't be right. very prudent of me to kind of say, oh, no, guess who's no, coming into town? No. <laughs> and then, uh, but you're in discussion with We are, we are. Right. And it's usually done with the city manager and his team. Uh -huh. And then once they have something a little bit more formal, they'll bring it into the city council and uh, we'll approve it or not. So currently there aren't any empty areas getting developed? in the city of Plymouth, uh, big projects. As far as commercial? Yeah, as far as commercial goes. Well, we have a few areas oh, that okay. uh, by Smith Medical, we recently uh -huh. approved a hotel oh. for people to stay uh, at Smith Medical oh, when right. they have like employees that want to stay for a few months, it's right. an extended stay. So there's that uh -huh. and uh, there's other areas that could be right, redeveloped. Right. Uh, and uh, TCF recently redeveloped oh, right. that that big building down there by Home Depot yeah. and brought in 10 banks, 10 of their banks yeah. into it as their headquarters. 
now with the recent news, yeah. it might be open. Just yeah, saying. who knows? Know. <laughs> yeah, and things <clears throat> do keep changing. There's constant right. change in the city right. of Plymouth. Absolutely. Constant change, constant development. And so if people are interested in that, they should call Danette Parr uh -huh. and they should uh, find out what is available. Right. Because we, we love our businesses. Right. We love to bring them in. We love them to expand in Plymouth. We're trying our best to work with oh, them right, to right. help them come in and... Well, it's important to, to get that kind of attitude out into the public so that the businesses know they're going to get help when they come to your city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we have a very good relationship mm -hmm. with our businesses. They do, like, they do like the city of Plymouth. Right. We have a, a very highly educated uh, residential population. Oh, right. And so we have really wonderful people, mm -hmm. wonderful schools. And it's just a wonderful area of the city to do business, like you said, with all the transit routes right. in and out, ways right. to get in and out. It's a wonderful area f to do business. And then another area in, in development is, is either single housing projects, is that the right word? Developments, anyway. Developments. There's single housing family developments or multi-family housing. Is any of that going on? And our recent, what we just talked about with County Road 47, right. that's exactly what's going in. Ah. Multiple uh, developments, including single family housing, uh, twin homes, uh, duplexes, and, and multiple uh, homes all, right along 47 ah. are going in. So and that they, area of your city they've is already starting been to fill approved in. almost all the way to 101. Ah. So, yes, yeah, so over the last f five years, we've pretty much filled up that area. There's still a few open, a uh, few farms left, but for the most part, over the five or ten years, that's ah. really filled in. So, you don't have a lot of empty land left? No, we don't. We uh, have a lot of available land uh -huh. that gets redeveloped oh, at this right. point. Oh, right. can be cuz yep. now we talk about redevelopment. Yeah, then you're in a different yep. stage. We are, we're moving past initial development. Right. right. In the next 3 or so years we'll probably be fully developed and we'll be redeveloping. Mm. Mm -hmm. And we already are doing some of that. And then how does your community development staff get involved with those smaller kinds of projects? Well, uh, people go into the city and okay. they can meet with our staff, okay. Steve Jutton, Danette Parr, and they can uh, discuss what kind of plans they have. And our staff is really helpful in explaining exactly what the process is going to be and the best ways uh -huh. for you to proceed through the process. That's and then I was just thinking we should give a plug to your comprehensive plan in terms of people that want to move into Plymouth. That's a good place to go to find out what's planned for different parts of the city, right? Absolutely. And it's all up there on the website where they can mm -hmm. look at that and see what's going to be happening in those empty areas right. that they're moving there right, right, right next to. That's a good point. And then I think you're getting some new restaurants in the city, and people are always interested in that in all our bar suburbs around the area. No more interested than the rest of the council. <laughs> we want more restaurants. Uh -huh. We have some empty restaurants. Okay. Uh, Ruby Tuesdays is right there uh -huh. on 55 in Vicksburg. We'd love to see another restaurant come in there. Some of the council members would love to see a tap room or a micro uh -huh. brew, just like other right, cities are right. doing. Again, that's something that uh, somebody's interested. They should talk to Danette Parr mm -hmm. and see how they can make that happen. Because you're right, we like to go out now. Mm -hmm. And uh, Plymouth is not a destination city like uh, Arbor Lakes with all its shops. Oh, right, right. Not a, they don't have a Ridgedale, but they do get out and, and they have local restaurants. Mm -hmm. and, and we'd certainly like to see more, like to see more uh, in the areas that we already have them and also in some other areas that need sure. to be redeveloped. Are there some fairly new ones now or are they? Uh, mostly switched over okay. from one restaurant ah, to another. We haven't okay. really had okay. too many right. build a new restaurant and frankly over the last two years I've seen some come up and then close back down ah. again. So restaurants a tough business yeah, and yeah. you you know the margins are thin so if you have a great idea, that's great, but you got to have a lot else going for oh, yeah, you to, to make that a going. successful right, business. Right. But we do have some very good restaurants in no, Plymouth. I, think I agree, because yeah. we go out to Plymouth. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, an area that I'm sure lots of people, when they heard it was Plymouth, is Four Seasons Mall. What is happening in that area? or what? Maybe give a little bit mm -hmm. of history for those that aren't real familiar with it. Glad to do it. Uh, so Four Seasons Mall has been empty since I've been a council member huh. for five years. Okay. Previous to that, there was a strip mall uh -huh. on it, and uh, a big corporation <laughs> bought the property. 
They wanted to build a large, uh, big box store right. uh, that was not zoned for that area mm -hmm. and would have brought in a lot of extra traffic. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the residents and other people did not want that, so they never actually came in and submitted it. And in the meantime, they put it up for sale, uh -huh. sale for a couple million dollars less right. than what they bought right. it for. Right. <clears throat> this particular area, a lot of people don't know that the strip mall itself is built on pilings. Oh. That the earth underneath it is very soft ah. and there's a lot of water in yeah. there. So it really makes it a difficult site to redevelop. Oh, yeah, it would. And for that reason, and I think that reason alone, a lot of people have taken a look at the site and said, eh, you know what, there's too much right. for us to do. But uh, two years ago, a gentleman came in and he was going to build a couple of hotels, right, some parking right. ramps, uh, some housing, some retail. Uh, we gave him TIF financing. Yeah. Uh, the Bassett Creek Watershed gave him money to be able to right. do a nice water project on there. And it just never fully came together. And that was just heartbreaking because oh, yeah. the city did what we can do. Yeah. And that's all we can do. Right. And still the private sector has to finance it right. and build it. Right. It would have turned it from an empty, vacant mall mm -hmm. into over $50 million worth of properties, right. Right. which we'd love, but it didn't work out. So a lot of people in that area, and that's of course my ward, right, ward four, right. very frustrated about right. that. And I don't, I don't blame them for their frustration. Yeah. I mean, it's you don't like looking at it. I've gone in several times and say, well, why can't we just, you know, condemn the building or something? Yeah. And there's a reason for that, that it, it changes the structure of the TIF financing, oh. so it lessens the value actually ah. by taking the building down. Which so that wouldn't be good. Contraintuitive <laughs> to me, yeah, but right. that's the, that's the reality. So uh, there are other developers okay. working, looking at it now. Um, if you've noticed over the past five years, there really hasn't been a lot of development around the cities no. uh, other than high density housing. Yeah. So a lot of people don't want high density housing, but That's true. we built the access down on 55. Um, Golden Valley is building a couple. Yeah. And in that particular corridor, that's about the only interest builders are getting ah, uh, banking right. and financial backing for. So uh, the retail development has gone down because of Amazon. I mean, who doesn't right. like Amazon, right. right? But it has an effect. And so I'm not exactly sure what's going to be developed there. We're just going to. So it's have... kind of up to time, and as new ideas come forward or somebody puts together a slightly different plan mm -hmm. that fits that mm -hmm. site. Recently, I was at the 694 and the river there. They have uh -huh. the Top Golf, right? Which is really fun. Oh, right. right. A Top Golf would have fit perfectly there, uh, and in my mind, that would have been a great, oh, yeah. you know, facility would, and right, draw right. for the area. Maybe something else like that can somebody can put together. Yeah, that uh, would be a fun thing. A, would, an entertainment would, kind an of thing. An entertainment thing would be yeah. terrific. Uh, it, you know, a medical device company might yep. want to put their headquarters yeah. there because it's right there. Right. But again, part of the problem with building anything is first you have to take out what's there right. and realize what kind of soils mm -hmm. you have there and try to mitigate work that, with that and work right. with that. So. Uh, I, I will not predict. <laughs> I would certainly like to see something right, uh, right. approved and developed over the next couple of years, but I'm not in control right. of that. No. So, and no, and no city truly is. Right. Bec because it's it's a matter of of the developer having something that will be profitable for them. Right. Right. People have said you know the city should buy the property, mm -hmm. but that would be a serious mm, yeah, draw yeah. To, for for the city of Plymouth to buy that right. property and then try to develop it. That's really not, we're not good at it. Right. It's not really our role. Our role is to provide services right. that are expected and quite frankly are, are done very well for the most part. Oh, right. But uh, that would be a new area that other cities haven't oh, really done right. that well. A lot of so money would go into there. I'm hoping to see something there soon. Yeah. I really am. And I, so, uh, but there is at least some interest. There is some interest, absolutely. and. If anyone knows anybody who'd like <laughs> to see something there, I mean, oh, sure. we have Danette Parr to come uh -huh. in, and she would be happy to walk them through the process just like we did with the other sure. gentleman. Yep, yep. And there still is TIF financing money for that ah. site. So tax increase financing right. money helps them get some money uh, to mitigate the costs. Right. Of the of the wet soil and what have you, and that's yeah. Kind you of kind a, of do things that help prepare the ground for them, right? Right, right. That that TIF money helps yep. do that so that they don't have to take on that extra burden. Yep. 
So it's helpful. So we'll, we'll all be hopeful. We'll keep our fingers crossed, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> well, it's good for people to know that what's been happening and kind of update people a little bit on absolutely. it. Absolutely, and, yeah, and I'm happy to talk to right. with anyone about it, and I have. Yeah. And uh, a little bit of luck, we'll see what happens. Right. Hopefully before I run again. Uh -huh. Right, right. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> No. To do that. And then I thought we've just got a minute or two left that there's different commissions that people can volunteer for. And mm -hmm. we're always asking you out there when you have time in your life. Sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. But when you've got a little time, if you can volunteer and help out your city, it is well appreciated and helps your city run smoother. Absolutely. We have uh, Planning Commission, Parks uh -huh. Commission, uh, HRA, uh, EQC, um, and Every year in, in January, uh -huh. uh, we go over uh, the year's worth of uh, applications right. that we get. Uh, so you can apply for it all year long. You talk to Sandy Ingdahl, she'll write you through the process uh, right there at the City Hall. And then next December, um, there's always spots coming up. It's a great way to learn about how the city works. And uh, we replace, oh, on the average of five to eight different mm -hmm. uh, members every year, every year. So take a look at it. You can look at the minutes from the meetings mm -hmm. to kind of get a flavor of what there, yep. what's there. They meet varying times, but often once a month. Yep. And you can go to those meetings if yep. you need a little more information. They're but all there, public meetings. Right. That's so right. if there's some area that interests you and you have a little time, help your city out. Absolutely. And get involved. Right. Right. If you, get involved. If you like it, it's it's interesting to you right. and it could lead to other things. So right, no and, and you can meet that. some of your neighbors. Absolutely. So it's an important thing. Yes. And then absolutely. you also have a volunteer coordinator, right? We sure do. So why don't you tell us a little bit I'll about her? I'll tell you something and... about Jackie Maws. She is, uh, she's something. So Jackie Maws has run our volunteer department for I think 20 years now. Ah. She's received all kinds of awards. Uh -huh. She saves us a couple million dollars every year and regardless of what your talent is, she can find something ah. for you. And that's a great way for anyone who doesn't want to be overcommitted to a commission, right. but still would like to volunteer and help their city out, talk to Jackie Moss in the volunteer department. It's part of the parks department, and she is just unbelievable. We had fire and ice last uh -huh. week. Right. Uh, there was at least 50 of volunteers helping uh -huh. out on all the individual right. things. I volunteer with them and bust some buckthorn in the fall and uh, it's like I said, our volunteer department is so unique that yeah, she'll go to other is. cities and they're like, what, are you kidding me? Yeah. You save a couple million dollars a yeah. year? So we have wonderful people in Plymouth that want to get involved and this is the way to do it. Yeah, it's a, get involved with the volunteer department, and, and and it's sort of an easy way because you've got what was her name again? Jackie Moss. Jackie Moss mm -hmm. is who you want to ask for, but there's all kinds of opportunities. Maybe you have one day that you can give, or maybe you have something you can do ongoing. There's all kinds of opportunities. The variety is unbelievable, yeah. and some of it might actually lead to employment. Oh, sure. We had one volunteer who was specifically gifted at a unique analysis, right? And he works for our police department now, yeah. so. You never know where it's right. going to lead, but it's really good to volunteer a few hours. And like I said, it doesn't matter what you like to do, we'll find something right. for you. Well, I want to thank you so thank much you. for I appreciate it. sharing your time and experience with our audience out there. We encourage you to tune in for part two of Plymouth Issues next week. And we will say a good night. Good night, everybody. Mm -hmm.